So this thing that I was reading about with whales, that there's mm -hmm. some new scientific breakthrough mm -hmm. where they're understanding patterns in the whale's language. Mm -hmm. And what they were saying was the next step, have AI work on this and try to break it down and break it down into pronouns, nouns, verbs, or whatever they are using. Decipher some sort of language out of it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And what most people don't realize is the amount that we actually already know. So dolphins, for instance, have names that they call each other by. Parrots, turns out, also have names that their mother will like whisper in each different child's ear, teach them their name to go back and forth until the child gets it. Ooh. Um, and one of my favorite examples is actually off the coast of Norway every year. There's a group of false killer whales that speak one way, dolphins that speak another way, and they come together in a super pod and hunt. And when they do, they speak a third different thing. Whoa. The dolphins. The whales and the dolphins. So they have a kind of like interlingua or lingua franca. Uh, what is a false killer whale? It, it's a sort of a, a messed up name, but it's just, it, it's a species related to killer whales. They look sort of like killer whales, but a little different. So it's like a in the dolphin yeah. genus. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. These guys. Okay, I've seen those so like before. Like a fool's gold type thing? Like mm -hmm. it looks like gold, but it's... God, they're yeah. cool looking. Yeah. Wow, how cool are they? Mm -hmm. God, look at that thing. That's amazing. <laughs> and so they hunt together and use a third language. Yeah, they speak a, a third different way. Is it limited? Oh, well, here's the thing. Like, we, we, we just... We don't know? We don't know yet. No. Did you ever read any of Lily's work, John Lilly? Mm -hmm. He was the wildest one. Yeah. Right? That, that guy was convinced that he could take acid and use a sensory deprivation tank to communicate with dolphins. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. 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 He was out there. Yeah. He had some really good early work and then he sort of like went down the acid route. Well, yeah. He went down the ketamine route too. Mm -hmm. Well, his thing was the sensory deprivation tank. Uh -huh. you know, that was his invention. And he, he did it specifically. Oh, he invented the yeah. sensory deprivation tank. We had a bunch of different models. The one that we use now, <clears throat> the one that we have out here is just a um, thousand pounds of Epsom salts into mm -hmm. 94 degree water mm -hmm. and you float in it and it's, you know, and you close the door, total silence, total darkness. His original one was like a scuba helmet and you were just kind of suspended by straps mm -hmm. and you were just in water and he had it so he could defecate and urinate and he had like like a diaper system or some sort of a pipe connected to him so he would stay in there for days yeah. and he was out of his mind well, he sort of set back like the study yeah. of animal communication mm -hmm. well the problem was the masturbating the dolphins mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> but so what happened was there was a female researcher and she lived in a house mm -hmm. and the house was uh, like three feet submerged of water and so she lived with this dolphin but the only way to get the dolphin to try to communicate with her is the dolphin was always aroused yep. so she had to manually take care of the dolphin and then the dolphin would participate but until that the dolphin was only interested in sex yep. and so they found out about that and you know the Puritans and the scientific community decided that that was a no-no cannot do that <laughs> I don't know why yeah. she probably, she probably she shouldn't have told anybody mm. Mm. I mean I guess this is like this is the 60s right was it I yeah think? I think that's right so sexual revolution people right. are like oh, there you go. a little yeah. bit more open to <laughs> this is uh, definitely not the direction that <laughs> I thought I, was gonna I, go yeah, yeah. Well, well, welcome to the show about <laughs> AI risk and, uh, <laughs> well, uh, you know talking about I'll give you though my, my one other like my most favorite study um, which is a 1994 University of Hawaii study which they taught dolphins two gestures and the first gesture was do something you've never done before mm. innovate and what's crazy is that the dolphins like can understand that very abstract topic. They'll remember everything they've done before. Um, and then they'll understand the concept of negation, not one of those things. And then they will invent some new thing they've never done before. So that's already cool enough. But then they'll say to two dolphins, they'll teach them the gestures, do something together. And they'll say to the two dolphins, do something you've never done before together. And they go down and exchange sonic information. And they come up and they do the same new trick that they have never done before at the same time. They're coordinating. <laughs> exactly. I like wow. that. I like that bridge. So their language is so complex that it actually can encompass describing movements to each other. That's what it, it's what it appears. Like it doesn't, of course, prove representational language, but it certainly, for me, puts the like Occam's razor like on, on the other foot. Like it yes. seems like there's really something there, there, and that's what the project I work on, Earth Species, is about. Because you know, there's one way of diagnosing like like all the biggest problems that humanity faces, whether it's like uh, climate or whether it's opioid epidemic or loneliness. It's because there's a, a we're doing narrow optimization at the expense of the whole.